Falcon Punch! What's up, YouTube? Lord Ryujin here again for another edition of Lord Ryujin Presents, giving you the month-long Smash Brothers special that I previously told you about. And now we're in week two of this special. Last week, I gave you the top 25 characters that I wanted to see within the next uh, version of Smash Brothers that's supposed to be coming out on the Wii U. Now, next week, I'm going to be talking about the characters that I would like to see on the 3DS version of Super Smash Brothers. But this week, I wanted to t talk about Smash Moves. Now, real quick, for those who did not see last week's video, I advise you to go through and uh, go check out last week's video so that way you have a very good understanding of the characters that I'm talking about and the reasons why I think they should be included. But if you've watched that video or if you're just curious, let's go on with this week's topic. So last week when I gave my list, I gave very specific reasons as to the characters that I would like to see. Uh, and I tried to mix it up a little bit, throw a little bit of old or some new. And throughout this whole last week, I've been thinking, well, what should they do with the Smash Moves for this game? Because Smash Moves were a very great addition, I thought, to Smash Brothers on the Wii, Smash Brothers Brawl. And I hope that's a, a, a tradition that they keep. But unlike Smash Brothers Brawl that came out, I think that they kind of dropped the ball a little bit with it. Now, I understand that the game was designed to cater to gamers of all types. I mean, if you're the kind of person that you just want to keep it simple, you have the Wii Remote. Just press 1 and 2, A and B. If you wanted something a little more complicated, you got the nunchuck controls, and you also got classic controller and GameCube controller support. So it really wouldn't have made much sense to alienate those people who wanted to play with a classic controller, or even play with a GameCube controller, by having it to where you had to do some kind of a weird, you know, Wii Remote Jangle or something like that in order to do a Smash move. Um, but just like they did it with Mario Kart, where you can press, I think, what, up or something on the D-pad to do tricks on the Wii, they could have done that, something similar. They could have had it to where you could have pressed maybe L and R or some button combination. And I'm really hoping that they do that with this, uh, you know. Granted that the Wii U gamepad is going to have a touch screen and they really should put some kind of like, you know, make an M for Mario and he does his smash move or something like that. But for those people who choose to use the Wii U remote, still have them press like maybe Z and B since they're the triggers. Or maybe press, you know, Z, L and Z, R on the, on the, um, the Pro Controller. For the people that choose not to use the the game the gamepad, the fact is that there are options for the controls. But it, more so, that's something that can probably be discussed later on, as far as how they could probably do the controls a little bit better. I have some really neat ideas, and we're going to go over that in you know a couple of weeks down the, down the road. But this video is more about the Smash moves that I wanted to see for the characters that I discussed in last week's video. So, I think for the characters that are already included, like um, Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong, the ones that have been in for a while, they should keep their Smash moves. There's not really a whole lot that you can do with them. I mean, yeah, Donkey Kong could wind it up and do a donkey punch, you know. But as long as they do something, it doesn't have to be anything that weird, you know? Meta Knight can stay Meta Knight, and Kirby can keep his Smash moves. Um, I was also thinking that um, maybe with Sonic the Hedgehog, they could do Super Sonic. And with Shadow the Hedgehog, they could do Chaos Control. Chaos Control has a lot of um, options to freeze the player, or even do some, kind of the same thing that Supersonic did in Brawl and make Shadow move faster than the other players. So th there's a lot of options there. And I think that that's something that they really should consider. I sat here and I tried to think for the longest time of what Wario could do. And, you know, I was thinking, well, maybe he can grab the player and he can spin him around, maybe throw a coin or something. 
But, you know, he could stay the Master of Disguise. I mean, it makes sense. They used Master of Disguise. Master of Disguise just had came out for the DS. I mean, they could keep him. It's still relevant. The problem that I'm coming across with um, is the same problem that I had with the characters from Star Fox in the last one. Uh, Fox McCloud and Wolf O'Donnell and even Falco all had the same smash move. You know, uh, I really would like to see something different come from them. I'm not sure what they could do differently, but I would definitely like to see some different smash moves from both of them. Bowser and Mario. Um, two characters that I think that they should keep from the um, classic games of the past. Don't really know what to do with them. I mean, you could probably have it to where Mario turns into his super large self from New Super Mario Brothers. And Bowser could maybe be Giga Bowser or Mecha Bowser or something. But, you know, or you could keep them the same as what they had from, the, from, from Brawl. There wasn't anything wrong with those Smash moves. Now, for Captain Falcon, um, this was another one that I had a difficult time thinking about. Because what does Captain Falcon really do? I mean, he does the Falcon Punch, and I think that move was made up just for the game. Because I've never seen it referenced at all in anything outside of his, uh, his anime and, you know, the Smash Brothers games. So what could he really do? And then I thought about it. Since he's associated with F-Zero, I would like to see Captain, Falcon, Captain Falcon's Smash move to be either a super falcon punch in which it's like a charged up you know f falcon punch something three to five times more powerful you can just take out everything in its path kind of like the samus aram blast that you have in brawl and when she unleashes it everything in the path is pretty much you know taken out something like that but something even better could be that he summons all the F-Zero cars and they come and run over people. And this could be something that could be really neat to do, especially with the gamepad, because then maybe you could see the cars coming and the other players that do multiplayer can look down at their gamepads and can see the cars coming and maybe have a better chance of dodging them. It's, you know, then, or maybe they can come from the side or something and he can, you can control them on the gamepad. There's all kinds of play options with that. I think it could be really neatly done. Now, the next three are the ones that really are not messing with anything within the series. You know, I mean, we're talking about Link, Zelda, and Garahim. And Link is Link, you know. Make him continue to do that really cool little sword attack that he does in Brawl. That was awesome. I loved it, and I still play with Link on Brawl. Just because I want to do that smash move every time, you know. For Zelda, since we're talking about using the Skyward Sword Zelda, and everybody would probably be a little bit whiny and fanboy, fanboyish if they didn't have some kind of an alternate form for Zelda. And, you know, since Sheik wasn't in there, use Impa. Impa was a pretty, you know, um, competent fighter. At least from what I saw from Skyward Sword. I mean, she wasn't exactly weak. She was able to hold her own. So I think that if you wanted to make it to where Zelda had some kind of an alternate form that she could turn into, have Impa come out and guard her. Something, you know? It could be pretty neat. And um, that could also be kind of the same thing that is done with her Smash movies. Maybe Impa comes out and it's kind of like a little tag team thing going on. Where maybe Impa kick somebody up and Zelda shoots a sword or, you know, something. There's all, there's all kinds of options that Nintendo could use with that. And then for Girahim, I'm sure that there are some people that when I said Girahim were like, well, what about Demise? What about Ganondorf? Um, you really should watch next week's video. That's all I'm going to say about that. But when it comes to Girahim, since he was um, Demise's sword, at least that's what was discovered by the end of the game, is that he was really Demise's sword. Is his smash move could be, he summons Demise, and he turns into Demise's sword, and Demise strikes you. And then you turn back into Girahim. You know, I mean, it could be something like that, that could be kind of interesting to see. For Samus Aran, and for Trace, both kind of played the same in, um, 
Metroid Prime Hunters, so Samus Aran could easily keep her smash move. There was nothing wrong with it. I liked it. I liked the fact that she could shoot out that huge beam and it sort of stripped her of her suit. That was kind of a nice way of introducing Zero Suit Samus without having to make her a whole separate character. Um, and Trace, one of the best things that he did in Smash in um, Metroid Prime Hunters was he, if he stood still, he went invisible. So I was thinking, his Smash move, wouldn't it be neat if he went invisible? Now, you could easily do some kind of a predator trick where maybe there's some kind of like a slight reflection where you can still kind of trace where he goes. But otherwise, I think that he should go invisible for his smash move. And, you know, that way, or maybe even have something else happen. You know, I mean, <laughs> there's all kinds of weapons that were in Metroid Prime Hunters that could easily be brought up that he could shoot. And, um... You know, or you could easily have it to other characters show up to support him. But I just think that it'd be nice to see Trace go invisible and be able to, you know, whoop up on people without being seen. Ice Climbers and Lolo and Lala. They were two, technically four, characters that in last week's video I really thought would, you know, make a good pairing. I mean, Ice Climbers... NES Classic, Lolo and Lala, one of HAL Laboratory's very first games from the Eggerland series that was introduced on the NES. Um, Lolo and Lala would intentionally play very similar to Ice Climbers. And so because of that, their smash moves should be the same. Ice Climbers can easily keep their brawl smash moves in which, you know, they make a giant um, ice pillar come out. For Lolo and Lala, though, I would like to see it to where, again, it's some kind of a tag team thing. And maybe they shoot out a giant egg that freezes all the characters. Or can be launched out in a, you know, straight path that freezes anything that it touches. And gives Lolo and Lala the opportunity to get in a few free hits. Um, or they could have it to where um, the Great Devil, who is like the big boss guy, whatever you want to call him, from the Lolo series, maybe he shows up and does something. There's all kinds of options they can do with that also. So Nintendo can really have their pick, but I do like the idea of the giant egg freezing characters because it kind of goes with Ice Climbers and how they have the potential to freeze characters. Forgive me because, again, having not played No More Heroes, I don't know what Travis Touchdown is capable of. Um, so make sure that you put in a comment or something, something that you would like to see Travis Touchdown do, but I think that he should just do something like what Link does and just kind of have some weird kamikaze, you know, sword attack like that. Jack Kamen and Kojak, both from Mad World, both kind of have their own little chainsaw on the wrist, driving a motorcycle kind of thing going on, so they could do something like that to where they hop on a motorcycle and then they cut you with their saw or something. You know, I mean, of course, keep it toned down. Don't make it M-rated or anything like that. But something like that. They can even have it to where they run over people. I mean, they, they, they're they both very similar. Code Jack is obviously a play off of the name Jack. So they're meant to play similar to one another. So why not have them do it in the game? I think the potential for Issa from Sin and Punishment Star Successor is the one that really presents a lot of potential with this character because I mean we're talking about the option of using the gamepad or even the Wii remote to literally have characters show up on the screen like they do on Smash Brothers. I mean how cool would it be for you to do Issa's smash move and then selling you know Issa's suddenly up at the front of the screen and all the characters are in the background like they're sending punishment characters and you start shooting at them um, or just something like that you know anything really I think Issa would be a really great addition to the series you know just because first of all melee attacks and missile attacks I mean shooting from a distance and then when enemies get close attacking them very similar to the way Kid Icarus plays so something like that where something like that what comes into play could easily be cool to see and I think that with the gamepad having a second screen Looking down at that and being able to see the characters 
from the distance and stuff and then shooting them. That would be really neat. I have to admit I have a problem with the Eternal Darkness characters that I initially picked. I still want them in the game because I think that Eternal Darkness needs some new representation. They need either a new game or characters to show up in another game. But what do I have Alexandra do? I mean, she uses a gun, so maybe she could do some kind of a weird gun thing, but outside of going and doing something crazy like pulling out a rocket launcher or something, I can't think of anything that she could do that's game-related. Uh, maybe she can summon the gods that show up at the end of the game. Maybe. Uh, as for Pyoas, or Pionis, whatever his name is, um, he can use a sword. I don't want to say he can do the exact same thing that Link does, because that's kind of, you know, pulling, doing, this, doing the whole Star Fox thing from the last game. All three characters played the same and did the same thing. But um, maybe he can summon monsters, or maybe he can make an insanity meter show up and it starts messing with all the other characters on, who are playing on the screen. That would be something that could be interesting, and I think that would probably make him the most interesting character, honestly. Especially if Nintendo decides to make multiplayer work on separate screens, separate gamepad screens, to where you look down and, you know, you see what you see, and the top screen is like all the characters or something. To where now suddenly your your perception is being messed with because Pionis does his smash move. That's something that's really neat. But um, that's really all I can think of. I mean, they're just kind of, you know, ordinary characters. They don't really have, you know, super mega powers like, you know, Captain Falcon does with his punch or anything like that. He's just a guy with a sword who's kind of undead. But if Nintendo thought of some really interesting Smash moves for them, I'm sure that they would play great. Well, guys, that's that's it for this week. I mean, make sure that you leave comments or video comments or anything that you want. Talking about Smash moves that you would like to see for characters or even talking about my list in general. Do you think that there are some characters that I should have kept in? Some that I should have added? You know, let me know what you think about it. But um, next week I'm going to go over characters that I want to see in the 3DS version of Super Smash Brothers, and I really hope that you tune in for that as well. But for now, thanks for watching. See you next time.